So uh, this morning, uh, the Open Footprint Forum are uh, holding a series of presentations in this track. And our first speaker, uh, this, well, before I introduce our first speaker, I'll just mention that at the very end of the morning, we have a panel session where we'll have one speaker from each of the sessions uh, uh, sitting here, and we'll take questions. So uh, look for that. Our first speaker this morning is uh, someone who probably needs no introduction, but A.J. Vandervoort who is the co-chair of the Open Footprint Forum and also the Global Sustainability Lead for Intertech. And AJ is gonna be talking about the Open Footprint's data model uh, roadmap. So what's coming next from the uh, forum? So AJ, welcome. I wonder if there's some here too. Thanks, Jim. Um, right, looking what we have here this morning, it's like uh, you guys already know it all, right? So. Um, what's, OFP? what's OFP, right? I see the, the family from Ernst & Young, welcome. I'm really pleased to meet you. Um, see the folks from, uh, from ExxonMobil, and I think we have a lot of uh, large oil and gas companies here. Anybody that's not in the oil and gas, as in not dealing with the oil and gas, right? There we go, that's right, don't forget. <laughs> there we go. Um, Great. Before I, I, I dive into it, and um, I just want to share a few things with you. And one, of course, is that um, the voting process has finished. So I put back this morning my title, <laughs> got it back. Didn't have it for a couple of weeks, but uh, thanks for your vote, uh, first of all. Um, so I will, together with Sammy, um, leading you in the next year. I think a very exciting year. I'm, I'm very um, honored and pleased that what we achieved last year is quite something, right? And um, I know this is the beginning. Um, there's a lot of work still ahead of us, and we hope that more people will join us in this journey. Um, I know we're here in Scotland, and it's cold, it's freaking cold. Uh, I've been here now for a week in Europe, and I don't understand how you do it, right? It's, uh, by the way, I'm from Florida, if you didn't notice. <laughs> um, so we have lovely weather there at the moment. Um, so that being said, and, and I'll take that next slide as a little, let's look back, right? And if I go back last year, um, I think, John, that's when I met you for the first time, right? Uh, this time around in, uh, in London, right? Um, and where we were then and how things have progressed, right? And where we are now and what we still all have to do, right? It's, it's pretty exciting. But in the meantime, around us, not only looking at what we are doing, a lot of things is changing. And I must admit, I had planned to be at COP28, um, I was scheduled to represent Intertech there um, on some of the sessions, but because of the situation in the Middle East, decided not to uh, pull through, but followed it very closely. And one of the things that I've learned from that COP28, and I know your CEO was there, and a lot of your CEOs as well, right, here, is that uh, oil and gas is now included, right? If I might say it like that, just bluntly. Right. I think so far in all the COPs that I've seen, uh, and John, you were here in Glasgow, right? Uh, I think the oil and gas was still sort of a little bit more outside, right? It, I, I've seen that, and then we had Sharm el Sheikh in between, right? And uh, so I wanted to start with that because it is a game changer, not only um, for for where we're at, but as well that now the energy industry is clearly part of the solution, right? And how that embrace is going to happen and what all will happen and what the journey is, I think is quite significant because when I ask my kids or when my kids need to tell their friends what I'm doing and I mention the word oil and gas, they often look another way, right? <laughs> so, and I'm not really in oil and gas, I'm just, you know, as Intertech, a supplier to the oil and gas world, right? And helping to make that um, a sustainable uh, environment. So 
that is a starting point to set the scene, what has happened. Then the other thing that happened from an external perspective is the Security and Exchange Commission. And um, for about two years, every week, every call, um, mainly Pete, Paul, and a few other ones, right, we, we just, is it happening? And I'm sure you guys at EY have constantly looked at, you know, what is happening with the SEC? When is it happening, et cetera, et cetera. In the meantime, the Europeans did their thing, right, and then this dreaded thing, as in no more scope three. And you're saying, okay, what now, right? Um, I must admit, in a lot of conversations up, leading up to that point, um, a few companies have sort of said, let's wait a bit with this scope three. We're not so sure how it all is gonna fit in, right? And I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for setting priorities. Um, I'm really, I, what I've learned in this as well, you know, it's the cadence, right? It, it, it is a marathon, it's not a sprint, right? And that cadence, I think with the guidance of particularly one of the largest oil companies in the world and, and uh, auditing companies, and of course, as well, technology companies, right? And the, the gentleman here from Fujitsu, I'd almost say you represent Google, Amazon, and Microsoft all together, right? Uh, Totally, <laughs> yeah. So there might not be a micro, is there anybody from Microsoft, Google, or AWS here? I don't think so, eh? no. You, yeah, exactly, yeah. So when we look at technology and how it's being deployed, I think we, we, we know that it plays in, 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 yeah, an important role in all this. So um, I haven't had any more conversations with WPCSD for the last three months. I hope to have continuous conversations with them. Of course, we want to come to grips. We know that what CSRD is doing, right, is still very critical, right? Um, but a little bit more on that a little bit later. And after a few whiskeys with Sammy last night, uh, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't sort of, you know, talking out of terms here. But we, we had a, a good bunch of conversations last night to come to grips what's really going on out here. Back to OFP, um, when we left Houston, and that is at the bottom, the data model 3.1, and, and our cell is here too, right? I, I really, and Ching Yang, right? What you guys have been able to achieve in a couple of weeks by meeting together and doing all what needed to be done to get a few things squared away, right? To say, hey, this is a relatively solid. At the same time, some other people or some other companies, Sandeep, I haven't seen Sandeep yet, um, have already implemented it. I think he's got about a dozen uh, implementations out there in various industries as well. Um, and I, Sammy will, I, I won't take the, sail, uh, the wind out of your sail, Sammy, but he told me just in the elevator up, I pushed the guys uh, as well hard to get as well an OFP implementation done, right? So he will tell you more. So we're seeing already practical implementations, you know, further than POC um, to be able to use that, what we have all sort of um, put in together. And love to learn as well from EY, how you're seeing that and where you're at, right? Um, I don't always see everything, but I'm happy to learn from you. Yeah. Um, so then we had the snapshot, right? It was a couple of weeks ago and um, yeah, I, I did have a little tear in my eye. <laughs> Honestly, when you see it coming out after so much pushing and shoving, right? Yes, finally. Um, as we know, it's a start, right? And, and I know it's Komar's not here yet, but Andrew, I'm sure if he, you know what I'm saying when he's saying if we hadn't had Gomar, we wouldn't have been as far as we are, right? Um, and then you learn, and that, that is what we're now doing with version, um, Four, and you see I've put a little line in between. It says next version, right? That is, most important thing is the facilities organizational boundaries and everything around that. And Petran, I, I, I really must thank you for what you have done in the last three, four months is extraordinary, right? Grabbing, as I call this stuff, right? And throwing data at it and finding, you know, how we need to improve the data model 
because if I've learned one thing right now, calculating an emission is the easiest part. <laughs> it's just a number, right? And I'm saying that with all the intent that it, it, it is, the rest of the stuff around it, how you organize it by facility or by equipment or by business unit or whatever, that really is a lot of interpretation, right? And that's where in the financial world you have the same thing. You know, you have all your boundaries and it's a joint venture and the rest of the stuff. So what we've been able, I think, to achieve and, and testing it, and we'll see the demo uh, this afternoon and tomorrow, right, uh, on a typical situation where you have one source of data Right, and you can use that for different uh, jurisdictions. Let me use that word, right? Within jurisdictions, you have maybe 10 different reports you might have to generate, right? Depending on what province it is, whatever it is. So again, the core is there. Yes, do we need to refine it? Probably we have to expand it a little bit. We might have to make a few changes to the core here and there. So the next six months is testing that. and and. Last night, I put that little line there, next version, right? So the next two days or three days together, and there's going to be a lot more people probably joining us from as well other forums in, in that, right, if they are allowed to join us in the OFP forum, <laughs> or, um, that what is the, the roadmap? What is the direction of travel? Right, and, and I have, and, and I thank Sammy for last night telling me, you know, what is the overarching umbrella? What are you gonna call it, right? And I have been, and it comes from the old SAP world, been always a functional guy, right? I don't care how the architecture sorts it out. There is some technology underneath there, right? And we both agreed last night, let's call it function, right? And I'll go into a little bit more detail. So. One of those functions is around, you know, what we have done so far is only carbon counting. And if Jane from the OSDU group was here, she actually constantly at every call calls it what OFPs do is carbon counting, not accounting. And she is so damn true. That's all we've done so far, right? The next part that we need to start thinking is about the accounting. Right? There is a debit side and there is a credit side within the environment. Right? Some people call it carbon credits, offsets, and that whole other word. There is a sink. Yeah? In the data model, we have emission source and we have emissions sinks. Right? Now, we need to translate that in a proper way right? to get that next version where carbon sequestration, you know, physically putting it down in the ground. But what does that mean? at the uh, administrative level, I've created a credit. That credit is, has a value, right, carbon price. That, that is that next step. And I hope I'm not talking to this slide too much and there's another five slides after this. And it <laughs> but I, I thought I'd grab this, this moment to say where we're at now, what we are hopefully, and we will finalize um, this week, that we say, yes, version four is done. Right, um, we have then one additional thing that we hope to do relatively quickly, and, and Jim here has already um, put some document together to say how quickly can we put this. Um, can I say the word public domain? Is that a good word? Yeah. So, like with the pact um, with the WBC, with the pact finder. You know, when they launched it, they as well launched the JSON schemas relatively quickly, right, with it. I, I'm glad that we haven't jumped the gun here, right? I'm glad where we are right now that it is a little bit more solid. Yeah, because the first time I remember I looked at the WBCSD, they had only two tables, basically. I was like, we have 85 tables in OFP. And I'm using the word tables here on purpose, right, or entities, right? That was my first impression. We have 85. How come they only have so little, right? Because, you know, you should have much more. I see they're expanding, right? So I think what we have been able to achieve is in our integration with WBCSD, and that's what's that point there at the top. They need us as much as we need them, right? Because 
they have focused on the scope three portion a lot, right? And I'm glad that we focused on scope one, scope two, get that organizational stuff going first, right? And yes, we will use certain things out of, of that and a little bit more on that later. So that is roughly where this slide right now, and Heidi, I'm not forgetting you, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for, for, for guiding us over the last two, three years, right? It's, it's been extraordinary how we every week do what we do, right, as volunteers, right? At least from my perspective, yeah. Thank you. Um, this is the latest version. <laughs> I've done a few seminars. I was at CERA Week. I was at the carbon tracking in Houston. I was at the carbon tracking in Calgary. I was at the um, Chicago event, Jim, that we organized together where we had Boeing and McDonald's. And this was the slide. They all wanted to. They all did what you did just now. Come forward and I, I want to have that slide to tell my organization what's going on out there all in one slide, right? And, um, and I can see Pete already say, wait, AJ, is this the latest version? Um, almost, I, I learned one thing, um, and in the middle it says something called Netherlands, with a little four on it, right? And for those that haven't seen this slide, right, um, the red asterisk is when the filing is due, right? Be it a 10K or whatever it is, right? The blue line is when I should have started collecting the data in a verifiable way. I'm just saying that here with that intent, right? The whole notion of shifting from voluntary to mandatory, that at a certain point there is either a limit or reasonable assurance, somebody is going to say, how did you get to that number? Right? And Sammy will do one about that number for tax purposes. I had the privilege to meet Julie um, from Chevron, um, is Shiva here? Yeah. Um, when Julie, who uh, by the way is the, on the advisory board of the carbon tracking in Houston, stood up and I'm sure um, some of you were there as well. She so used that, that number 42. You guys know where that, that number comes from, right? Dear Douglas Adams and uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? Um, so when that number came up, the answer was 42, but what was the question, right? Yeah, and I can build a whole story around it. We have the same problem, right? Because again, 42 what, right? 42 kilogram, 42 tons, whatever, you know, you even Douglas Adam doesn't worry about that number. You say, what was the question, right? And we have that same problem when we are going through, we need to go back to the source, what we're really trying to, to solve. So I'll use that number 42 a couple of times just to note that it's very clearly something that we're all grappling with, right? Um, by the way, it took them, what was it? One million, one million years to come up with the ultimate question. Wasn't that how it was, uh, Sammy? And then, what was the ultimate question? What, oh, the, uh, the I think they, they, they let the earth build something else. Anyway, uh, let me not butcher this story. Keep going. Keep, keep going, right? <laughs> keep going, right? So why, why did I put that word Netherlands right in the middle? Um, I had the fortune to be last week in the Netherlands um, with, with Shell and um, they from the 1st of July, all Dutch companies with 100 employees need to report their business travel and their commute travel, and they're gonna be audited a year later. That's why the asterisk is a year later, right, in the middle. Um, irrespective of if you are on the stock exchange or not. So companies like ExxonMobil, Total, Shell, that have significant um, Retail stations there have organizations that more than 100 pe people, and they will be audited on their commuter travel and their business travel. As an example, I didn't know that was happening. Pete, I'm, have you ever heard about that?
Yeah. 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 So this is one of those that I picked up, right, and saying, okay, they're taking subsets, right, and saying, let's start with that one. So uh, I put a little footnote. So it's called CO2 reporting on work-related mobility compliance requirements based on filer size of more than 100 employees, right? That's just as a little... There's a lot of this stuff going on, right, that we are constantly saying to say, okay, it, it ain't going to impact our data model, but being aware of that and seeing how organizations now need to organize themselves, that's what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. Any questions on this? Yeah. So I've learned the last year as well what OFP is and what is not. Won't go into too much detail here because this slide has been up a couple of times, right, in the last couple of weeks. And I think together, uh, team four or team five or work group four and five, we, we, we sort of came up with this slide. And as well, um, ExxonMobil has been practicing this as well in, in some of the seminars that we had, right? Um, so where I wanted to focus a little bit is, is on is at the top what it's not. It is not a certifier or verifier of emissions, right? It supports it so that an independent body can verify it. That's when it's verified. It won't automatically verify that what has been calculated, right? That's, that goes back to where probably companies like Intertech, EY, and others Right, saying, hey, we are that independent body to be able to say, yeah, that was done correctly. And how does that, whatever, we can, we can talk more about it, right? Um, I'll pick up the third one down there. It's not a central emissions data re uh, reporting tool. I had to get used to that. I'm still not always getting it, right? It's like, Wait a second, how did Johan Krebers and other people seven years ago decide that this architecture, and they call it OSDU, right? And how they do that. I'm, 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 I'm still, until I feel it and see it and look under the hood, I'm from Missouri, I always say, you know, show me, right? I wanna see that. But what I'm getting at now is that the data model is your blueprint, right? And, and I had the privilege to spend 15 years with SAP, who is as well going into the cloud. And I've asked once Gartner, they said, how SAP is going in the cloud, right? and how, for example, Salesforce is in the cloud. Is there any difference between the two? And said, absolutely. The one is native. There's only one data model blueprint in Salesforce. In SAP, there is thousands. They make copies of it. Now, why is it important that we have one? One instant and multiple tenants. I'm using those words now deliberately because that's how Gartner does it, right? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to use sometimes phrases. I'm like, okay, I still need to bounce it off to Bertrand and others, right? Um, but what I've learned, the way it does the partitioning and the technology behind it, the architecture, that means if there is a regulatory change, right, that means all those ones that, 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 that use the open footprint data model will have the change instantly applied to all their versions and instances that they're using operationally, yeah. Is that, is that, to me that concept was, because I have an SAP background, always foreign, right? But that is the essence of it, and that is that future proofing, right? I think that is something that I still want to see it more and more. So what does that mean? Uh, am I now stuck to it? Uh, can I have extensions? And there's all these IT words around that, right, to make that happen. But I. I've realized it is not a central emissions data repository. So what is it then? Is it decentralized or whatever kind of stuff? And then, uh, so far, if you've noticed, I haven't used the A word and the B word yet. <laughs> yeah, A stands for AI and B stands for blockchain, right? Um, but we know both of them have a role to play in a lot of this, what we're talking, right? The data model is one, it's standardization of data, and then how you're going to deploy it and how you're gonna do it. And John Lucy, 
was in all the sessions yesterday and we had 10 minutes and he was doing a brain dump on me <laughs> around AI. And I know, you know, with, with John and others, you know, there is the technology that is available these days to do things more efficiently. And if you want to do it or not is up to you, right? Nothing to do with the data model in itself, right? Of course, we want to have hooks, we want to have APIs, we want to have all that good stuff, right? So um, that's where I see a lot of, during the deployments, things starting to blossom, right? And we're starting to learn how would that work in all these environments and architectures. So that is, and here is my, my first step into something we haven't discussed yet, except after four whiskeys with Sammy last night, five. <laughs> and this is the roadmap, this is the direction of travel. So with the SEC saying scope three, it's complex. This whole thing about not being in control over, your oper over the data and there is a liability to that data, right? because I rely on other people providing me that data, is a significant consequence for large organizations, right? So is this a moment of reflection and we're looking at the past and saying, dear Mr. W WRI and WBCSD who developed the greenhouse gas protocol, great story about scope three, but in practice there are some challenges. Right, let me say it like that, right? So, we can, since we are right now, today, version four of OFP only counts. It doesn't account for the emissions, right? And I, I said, mentioned it before. So, it is my an attempt to say, should we, for version five, start to bring in the carbon sequestration, not only from a, what happens, but as well the administrative part, because you create a credit, right? So you're sinking, you're sourcing, debit credits. So that we're really moving into this little bit of a, an accounting word. Is that what we should be doing? So that is a sort of trying to frame it in a way that to say, okay, that means there are obligations, right? And I'm, I'm using that word a little bit on purpose, right? Behind obligations might sit something related to why we're doing this, what we're doing, right? Some targets um, as well, something, you know, that is important for the planet, right? Um, so, and I can call it climate, can't I, Sammy? Yeah, that's, that's the other part. You know, there is a financial, there is a physical risk. There is a transition, right? And those are elements of that one that I wanted to capture, in essence, under the word obligation, right? And then there is, of course, compliance because of the regulations. And um, Darren, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased to have you on board and what we have been able to achieve so far in the way you've paced it. And it's always about focus and prioritization. And there's nobody else that can do that with such a succinct way. Um, and as you know, it's all about compliance at the end of the day, right? While we're doing the compliance, we can do a lot of other cool stuff too. Right, because it's not only about reporting, it's as well about it being verified, as well as being measured and monitored. By the way, I want to bring the word monitor in here as well, right? Because if we don't monitor, if we are reducing, then why are we doing this stuff, right? Sorry, it all sounds a little bit philosophical, but that's basically where we're at, right? So, and, and that arrow there is to create a functioning marketplace, right? At the moment, we know in the voluntary carbon market, it's imploded, it's collapsed because nobody believes what's going on in that market, right? But we know that we need that because an asset is tradable. Once you start to talk that middle bit, then you start to talking about assets, right? Because I have a liability and I have an asset, right? And that asset is that credit. Right, yeah. and then you can trade that stuff, right? A lot of people have already gone before us in this whole carbon trading, you know, Europe with the ETS and all this, right? But it's been voluntary and it's been a bit of a disaster, right? Yeah. Now that it's moving towards mandatory, those that I 
have gotten to learn and got close to. There's one gentleman by the name of Bob Litterman, and I'm meeting him in London next week, um, who is um, chairing the uh, CFTC, the Commodities Traders and Futures Commission, and they are heavily involved in that area, that, 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 that moving towards a marketplace so that we get the financial benefits right, that are required to make the transition happening. Yeah. But financial benefits sounds a little bit odd here in this place because everybody thinks it's a cost. Right? But it goes back to what Sammy is always saying. Right? What, what, what are the benefits? How can we do that? So that is one way of looking at our potential evolution. Right? There is another one. Um, sorry, before I go there, first quickly on the architecture, because when Jim and me and a few other people <laughs> uh, said, we need a better picture than those yellow boxes that we had of the open footprint, right? We need something that is more visual, right? And we created this thing, I think, over a couple of weekends, right, or weeks, right? And we said, hey, this is actually not too bad, right? So the ecosystem architecture, Right? And, and the word ecosystem here is as well a word that I feel the open group really starts to come to grips with. Right? It's not only enterprise, it's ecosystem. Right? And I've been trying to picture that in this to say, yes, there is an ERP system out there. Yes, there is an ESG reporting software. And then there is something, that, 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 that temperature and the climate thing, the earth right, out there. Because we haven't focused at all in OFP about anything related to climate. Right? We, there's no field that says what's the temperature today. There's no field what, what's the weather today, right? That, that, should we go in that direction, right? That's one of the questions that we're trying to answer as well in the next couple of days, right? Is that something we need to go into, right? Um, then there's OSDU, dear OSDU, thank you so much for spending seven years and doing this in a way that we can share data it's what, one thing I learned as well, emissions data is sensitive data. It's so sensitive that it, at Intertech I can tell you this because it's public knowledge. Um, we did about 1,200 flights for Total to measure their emissions in lots of parts of the world, Gabon, uh, Africa. So Intertech comes in there with a drone and then there is a drone flight over an asset, right? It captures the methane emission and I knows exactly and pinpoints where it is right over the facility. The data goes to a military grade laptop that is provided to us by Total. We don't see the data. We don't verify it. We just fly the drone and the data goes directly to Paris and they take it on from there. That's how sensitive emissions data is, right, as, as an example, right. Um, now, I haven't said much about methane because I know Sammy is going to talk a lot about use cases, but what I learned, what happened at COP28 and, and, and OGMP and all those other organizations come together, we can fix a lot of stuff very, very quickly, right. And I'll, I'll try to say it correctly, just bear with me, right. But I was told at Sarah Week, um, there are 8,000 um, executives from energy companies are all together, plus a whole bunch of other people, right? Um, but mainly the CEOs, that right now, every year, 80 million metric tons of methane leaks, only oil and gas. We're not talking about landfills, we're not talking about agriculture, right? And we know that over a 20 year period, you multiply that by 80, that's what you do when it's methane to come to CO2 equivalents, right? That is close to 7 billion metric ton CO2 equivalent globally, right? That's the same as all the emissions of all the cars in the world, yeah, or even a little bit more, right? We can fix this, as the gentleman said on stage. That's the half empty glass right, how bad it looks, right? The half full glass is we don't need to invent any, we can f fix this problem in the next decade, right? I learned the other day that in landfills, it's even more. It's almost 50% more 
right, on landfills. You know that landfill gas, almost 60% is methane, right? And if you look at it on a global basis, it's about 115 metric tons of methane. This is calculations from about three or four years ago, because it's much more difficult to, to measure that, right? Yeah, and then there is agriculture. We'll, we'll come to that one later, right? So if there's any use case that for me has priority right now, and, and because of what happened at COP28 and everything after that, I think methane, and with methane comes something called monitoring, right? With monitoring comes this word satellite, uh, continuous monitoring, drones and balloons, and I know that Spectre at ExxonMobil uses balloons, right? that you fly over your facility for a period of time, be it in a Permian. I think they fly for about three or four days. Um, so that's one example of that. So the monitoring of those emissions, right, besides measuring, and, and that's that new word, or not new word, it's been around for a while, and I've started to introduce it to OFP, and that is, um, I'll leave, Sammy, I'll let you do this slide, right? You have that one, yeah. Um, and it's MMRV. MMRV was a public announcement in November 2023, right, um, to provide a consistent set of technical criteria for reporting emissions and operating data at various levels of data availability, right? Measure, monitor, report, and verify. Right? These are the participating countries, right? The framework is being baked, as I call that, right? believe during this year it might be firmed up. So if we get closer to all this and we decide that methane is a use case that we want to expedite or prioritize, right? We just need to come to grips with those 20 countries and what they're deciding to do, right, around this stuff. I learned at the Sarah Week that the Department of Energy of the US has taken a lead in this. They see the urgency. Right, um, so I think it's as well something that we, you know, would love to see how close can we get to that. Is this something that we need to, in our team five, get more engaged in that part from a DOE perspective? Yeah. Um, how am I doing for time, Sammy? Yeah. Um, for those that. Um, are not so familiar with, with OFP. Just wanted to show this slide, and you can see I've changed the word teams to working group, right? And added that working group number seven, right, to it. So um, during this uh, week, we are hopefully going to frame up some um, guidelines around it based on the policy that has come out from the open group, how we need to look at AI, and I'm so glad that we added that word analytics to it and getting insights, right? And John, thank you for quickly explaining how these two work together, right? Um, so that is the new group that we're starting um, this week, yeah, basically. Since we're all already participating, anybody here that is not part of OFP, right, um, just we'd like to welcome you to join us in this journey, right? It's exciting times. We have now the first snapshot out. After six months, we'll refresh it and renew it. Um, I, there is one other thing, although um, we haven't finalized it completely yet with the open group, but I think we can sort of say that we are very close to it, that the tool that we'd like to use, and I've had meetings as well with OSDU uh, just on the sideline to say, hey, we're looking at this tool called Hackalade to make this whole versioning of the data model, which we believe will get quite significant iteration coming, right, in the next couple of six months, much more easier to manage, right? And, and uh, together with Betran and Ching Yang, we've tested it uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, it's very close to GitLab, uh, which we know is our collaboration environment from the open group, right? And if we get this 
going in the next couple of months. I know we have already bought a few licenses just ourselves, just to test it out. I think we have an act. And Derek, I see you sitting there. I mean, if anybody that has thrown it, you know, in the, is you, right? You said, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? And I know. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that I think we need to look at, into, right? But it means that we have the opportunity as well to bring the data model out on the various different architectures, relation, relational databases, SQL, NoSQL, and all that kind of stuff. Right? Um, so that is where we'd like your help, you know, particularly those that are very dear to the IT uh, world. Um, that's what we need in the next six months. Right? Thank you. Let's all <clears throat> give a thank you to AJ. Thank <clears throat> you.